Hi there. In this video, we will discuss how to create a pivot table. We'll get into how to create a data table within a worksheet and then leverage that to create a pivot table report. So let's get started. This video is being brought to you by my website, danriverapmp.com. And here on this website, you can register to get free project management templates to help you in your everyday work as a project manager. Also, there's online courses offered at a discount to the normal price. There's also a blog where you can get valuable information on various uh, topics of project management. And also there's videos here that can give you a quick overview of various project management topics. And also finally, you can be abreast of any of the books that I plan on releasing in the online store. So again, please take a look at this website, danriverapmp.com, and you can find the link for this website in the description below. So on screen, we have data that represents the work hours that project resources are posting to the project that they were assigned to. So let's go over briefly the data elements involved in this spreadsheet. The project number is the identifier of the project. There was one specific number assigned to each specific project. The project name is the formal name of the project. The phase represents the current phase that the project is in. The posting date is the date that the resources posted their hours work. So in this particular format, we have the year, the first four characters are the year, 2018. The next two are the month, June, and the last two are the date. Then next here, we have the employee name. Then we have the hours column, and this represents the number of hours that the resource worked on that particular day. And then here is the amount of the actual dollar amount that represents the cost of the resource working that day. And this is derived by taking the number of hours worked and multiplying that by the hourly rate of the employee dependent on which country they're located in. Here, the currency will be measured in US dollars, and if the resources are in other countries, the conversion is calculated to US dollars. And then finally here, the fiscal period represents the fiscal month that the employee worked. So what we're gonna do now is that, if you notice here, the particular data here is in a tabular format or a spreadsheet format, typical of what you would see in a spreadsheet program. But the first step in creating a pivot table is that we would need to turn this data into a data table so that the pivot table can pick up that data formally. So the way we do that is that we're going to select this entire data range, transform that into a table, and then leverage that to create our pivot table. So firstly, we're going to select our field names, which are up here. And preferably, you want your data table to be in a format where you have your field definitions here at the top first row, and then your data down below. So I've selected the top row here, and if you press Control, Shift, and Down Arrow, your entire data range will be selected. Now the next step to create the actual data table, you would do Control T, and as you notice by default, your data range is selected. Now, if your data table has headers, which ours does here, you want to have my table has headers checked here. When you're ready, click OK. And when your data table is created, you will notice now that there's every other line is a colored line. In this case, it's a, a shade of blue here. Now, with our data table still selected, if you notice here, there's a brand new menu called table design. This came as a result of you creating this table. So if you click here, what we want to do is that up here on the table name, we want to rename this to a format that we're going to leverage for our pivot table. So this data table name will be internal labor. Now, one thing about table names is that there are no spaces allowed in the table names. So if a good idea is that if you want to separate words, you can capitalize for every new word, you can use a capitalization here. And that's a good idea. So if we do enter here, this data table name is formally named internal labor. Now with this data table selected and built out, let's go to a pivot table tab. And what we're going to do here is that now we're going to start building out our pivot tables. So the way you do that is that you go up to your menus here, go to the insert menu here, 
and you select pivot table. Now the table range is the name is the name of the range that we just created, which in our case is internal labor. And the you want here are some options. Since this is a brand new worksheet that we already selected, we can just say existing worksheet. Now, if you were still in the internal labor tab, you can click on new worksheet and it would give you a location option. But since we already have a brand new worksheet here and we want to put our, our pivot table here, we'll just select existing worksheet and select OK. Now you notice here that the pivot table structure is inserted here on the spreadsheet. And now you can start selecting the fields that you want to put into your pivot table. So the first pivot table that we want to create is a pivot table that represents each resource and the hours they entered for the month and the associated cost for that resource. So the way we do that is that here you can select the field names or you can also drag and drop to these sections here. So filters will be the section where the data will be filtered on. Columns will be the data elements that will appear as columns. Here you will you can drag down elements that will appear as rows on the particular pivot table. And then the sum of values will be the, the sum of the values associated with each particular element in the row. So what we want to do is that since we want to show the employees and their hours, we're going to show each row with the employee name. So I'm going to drag down here the employee name. And as you do this, if you notice on the left, you can see your pivot table getting built out as you do this process. And then here in regards to the columns, we want to go to the fiscal year and period because we want to identify when exactly they're entering hours. Okay, so fiscal year and period is here. We're going to drag that here. And then what we're going to do is that here for the values, we're going to have a sum of the hours. So we're going to drag the hours field down here to the sum of values. And also the amount, because that's the cost, we're going to drag that here. So we have the sum of the hours and the sum of the amounts as the values. And you can see your pivot table getting built out as we go through this. So here on this pivot table, you're going to have the resource name here, the total sum of the hours for January 2018. These are the hours that they'll appear and the associated amount for that resource in the month of January. And this process will follow February, March, April, and you have the associated sum of the hours and also the sum of the amounts. Now you can also do some formatting here where you, for example, the sum of the amounts, if you select this row and you can do some formatting, you can insert currency and then you can, you know, reduce. If you click here, you can reduce the amount of decimals places there and you can do some formatting. Here, you can also, you know, if you want to center, you could do some formatting there so that the data looks more cleaner. So this data continues until you get to the end and you have a total sum of the hours and total sum of the amount. Now, another thing you can do with the pivot table is that you can freeze the panes. So like if you noticed here, we had to scroll right to find the total sum. But if you want to continue to see the name and the column, you can click here in this first uh, cell C5. You can come up here to the search and you can click, you can uh, actually search for freeze panes. And here, what you want to do is that for freeze panes, you select this option here. And what this does is that this freezes the headers here as well as the individual's name so now if i click out of hit this and if i scroll to the right if you notice the resource names stay here and i can continue by leveraging the navigation tools here i can click and continue coming over to see a particular view of the report and likewise going downward if you notice the field names are staying intact but the resource names are disappearing. So that's another way you can work with the pivot tables. So now I'm gonna create another pivot table so that we can show each project's total hours for each fiscal period. 
So here we were going by the resource. Now I'm going to go by the project. So the way we do that is that we're going to create another pivot table. And let's say I wanted to create that here in cell B17. You can create multiple pivot tables on the same spreadsheet. So I'm going to go back to the insert menu, select pivot table. And I'm going to use the same table range that we created before. So it's going to be internal labor. And I'm going to click that. And then you notice the same thing happens again. So we have the pivot table framework here. And then over here on the right side, we can start selecting our pivot table fields to start constructing out that pivot table. So in this case, I want to have the columns having the project name and the fiscal time period appearing on the rows going down the left side. So the way I do that is again, I come up here and for the fiscal period, I'm just going to click and drag that down here. And then again, on the left side, you start seeing your pivot table getting built out. And in regards to the project name, I'm going to come up here because I want to have I'll bring down the project name here into the columns. Okay. And then in regards to the values, I want the amount. Of the project. And in regards to the filters, I want to filter by the project number. So I'm going to come back here. And I'm going to bring the project number here. So by placing a project number filter here at this pivot table here, if you notice up here, the project number is selected as the filter. This creates a filter called project number. And the way that happens is that each one of these projects is associated with a project number, like we just looked at in our data field. So if I select P101 and select OK. It's just going to give the totals for the system decommission project. So that's how these filters work. So now if I go back here and I select all and do OK, now I get the entire pivot table here. Now, if you notice, this doesn't look really nice here. Uh, you know, the first pivot table we originally constructed is here and then you immediately have the second pivot table starting here so you can do editing like you normally would in excel and here you would insert rows and that just brings your pivot table down here and it keeps the integrity of the pivot table here and again this is not looking nice up here because what's happening is is that you're maintaining the headers from the previous pivot table so what you can do is that just come back up here and type freeze on the search. And in regards to freeze panes, you can unfreeze the panes here. And then another item I wanted to point out is that it works like Excel where values that are truncated or not visible, you can double click on the cell handle here or the column handle, and it'll default to a space where all of the number values can be uh, viewed. So as you can see here, now you can see all the numbers. So that's so the editing remains the same. It doesn't change for pivot tables. Now, when you click into a pivot table, you will see the pivot table field selection. If you click outside the pivot table, that field selection will disappear. So I get a lot of questions where, how do you go back and select field selections? What you do is that you just come into the pivot table and click anywhere inside of it and your pivot table selection fields will appear. So I just wanted to emphasize that to you. So that's gonna do it for this lecture on how to create pivot tables. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button below and see the associated links in the description area of this video. Thanks for watching.